If you're looking to spend a modest amount on a new SUV, you're gonna go small, like this Mazda CX-30. This is the subcompact class, and usually cars like this don't look as great, but this one absolutely does, in this red and almost any color. And if you're going Mazda, well, you can start at $25,000. It's their most affordable SUV. This one, 38 grand. That's because the CX-30 goes two different directions, economy and luxury. I'll tell you why. The CX-30 got a lot of safety upgrades for 2023, but now there's not really any changes except from a few trim levels, and they're very, very minor. This car has been out since 2020, and it's the second most affordable Mazda in the lineup, and it's most affordable SUV. There's a lot to like, and there's also some things that should be changed. There's two gasoline engines for 2024, just like before. A two and a half liter inline four, naturally aspirated with over 190 horsepower. Or this one, the turbocharged version of that same engine with 250 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque. Now you can switch between 93 octane and 87. The power numbers do drop a little bit, but it doesn't damage the engine. And fuel economy is pretty decent. All-wheel drive is standard on every CX-30, so the numbers aren't so bad. But a six-speed automatic, that's kind of the thorn in this car's side. What's nice about itty-bitty SUVs like the CX-30, I can kind of feel tall for once. They're not towering. And that's the nice thing about them, because you can park it anywhere. Nice and short, but this is not a stubby car. Mazda knows how to design an exterior. From any angle, you're seeing nice creases, you're seeing nice crisp LED lighting, just enough chrome, just enough detail on every single surface. It really flows. It's pretty, especially in this soul red crystal metallic. It's just over $500. It's worth every dollar of that charge because Mazda does paint quality so well. This is a small car, it starts at 25 grand, again, but the quality that you're seeing, especially all the details on the exterior, like the LED lights that fade in and out like incandescent bulbs, Mazda puts a lot of effort here and it shows. Behind the rear seats, 20 cubic feet. When the seats are folded, 45. This is a small car by any standard. The CX-30, it's a pleasant car to drive. That's what Mazda does first before anything. They actually like driving. They got engineers who like driving. Then they give it to journalists that like to drive. And then their owners. It's just a constant evolving process here. And every model year, well, they don't have to change anything because everything's already sorted. The steering feel. The suspension. Just the way the whole car connects to you. You can take that for granted in sports cars and luxury cars, for example, but in this segment, that type of feeling doesn't come standard. The turbocharged model, it's a welcome addition. In this type of car, you don't usually get 250 horsepower, and you definitely don't get over 300 pound-feet of torque. Not in any gas-powered car. When you're at mid-range to higher speeds, that's where this engine tends to shine. In the lower bit, it's actually not as perky as I would expect. And a lot of it really is due to the gears. Every time I drive a CX-30 or a 3 or a CX-5 or the CX-50, they're all sharing the same engine and transmission, which is great until you realize there's faults in there. There's not enough gears. That's really what it is. Six gears today doesn't really work with today's modern turbocharged engines because they just don't have enough torque at the lower end. If you catch this in the wrong gear, you get a gap. It's like kind of stepping between two bigger stairs when you expect a second stair to be in between. There's just not enough gears. A lot of cars now have eight speeds. This is just six. Here is good. But say if you want to merge onto a highway, sometimes the CX-30 has caught me a little off guard because I would expect it to be accelerating quicker given the numbers really big numbers coming out of this engine. So if Mazda put an eight-speed automatic, really just up another two gears, where a lot of competitors already do this, they would just improve on this car that much more for, I don't think, really that much more of an investment. But all that aside, once you're up to speed, this is a quiet car. It really is. There's a lot of insulation. The seats are very comfortable. This is one of those rare small cars that you can relax in and you don't actually mind taking for a drive, with, even with a couple people here, for more than an hour. A lot of these cars, I just want to get out because they're just too tight, they're too cramped, they're too rough riding and choppy. Not the CX-30, it's none of those things. 
And that's why at this price category, especially just below 40 grand fully loaded, it does compete with the Audis and the Mercedes and other Lexus models. Throw any luxury brand that's making a subcompact SUV. This goes toe to toe with all of them. And I don't think they drive better than this Mazda. They don't. Even though this is a few gears down, so what? In the scheme of things, it's a pretty good package. One thing you'll notice in the CX-30 is that it does roll a little bit more because it's lifted. When I say a little bit more, a little bit more than the CX-5, and certainly more than the three hatchback, which is much lower. This car is definitely tuned more for comfort, which on some rougher roads and terrain is what you want. It's just not as lively a handling car as other Mazdas are. Because Mazda already sets a pretty high standard for itself. So if you're used to that kind of knee-jerk reactions, this one's just a half a beat slower. Not terrible. My preference is still the Mazda 3 hatchback because you can get the same turbo all-wheel drive powertrain in a car that's not really that much smaller. So this is really more of a looks, not really so much utility, except for the ground clearance. If you absolutely need a couple more inches of clearance, fine, the CX-30 will do for you. Just know that at your Mazda dealer, you're not gonna get any really difference if you choose a regular car versus an SUV. In sport mode, it just has the transmission at a slightly lower gear. Again, the response time isn't much better, but the steering is, the tracking is really good. And the all-wheel drive system is pretty transparent. With this type of car, I would say you probably don't need all-wheel drive, especially if you're going for that base engine. Mazda was wise and they said, okay, we'll include all-wheel drive as standard. We'll charge you a lot more than the regular naturally aspirated version. But my take is, is that it's worth it if you're competing in the luxury segment, because this truly is a great alternative to those cars. I'll just say it again, the more I drive this car, the less I want a Mercedes GLA or anything else like it. Because those cars, to me, are overpriced and they underdeliver. This one over delivers for a good price. The all-wheel drive system, we're driving after a pretty big ice storm and snowstorm for New England, big these days. And I think it operates pretty transparently. It really does. You don't really feel it kicking in. But the fact is, there's no other driving modes other than sport. So it's sport and off. There's no snow mode. There's no locking for the all-wheel drive system. That'd be nice. But in reality, you don't really need all these modes. There's some paddle shifters. And really, you just got to execute some good judgment while you're driving and trust the car, which I do. Brake feel, pretty decent. Could be a little stiffer. But for everyday driving, totally fine. For 2024, there's a new Select Sport trim that replaces the Sport, and it has leatherette and also dual zone climate. This one is the Premium Plus, so you're getting a lot plusher leather inside. Even though the visibility is pretty poor inside, the CX-30 has a very well-crafted interior. All of these really nice colors, fabrics, touch points, it feels premium. Heck, it's in the name, but that's actually what it is. And for 2024, there's another new trim, the Carbon Turbo, which looks just like this car, only with brown leather seats. I like sitting inside a CX-30, but I never like looking outside of it because the windows. The sills are really high. It's really tough to get in and out. You might bonk your head. All these cars that are in the subcompact category, they're small, but the CX-30 is among the tightest. The bad part about the CX-30, sitting back here, it is tight. Every dimension feels Pretty claustrophobic, but if you don't pay attention to that, the seats are actually really comfortable. But I do wish at this price, there should be heated rear outboard seats right here, and there's no USB port. So Mazda, gotta give us some more. New for 2024 is a 10.3 inch screen that's standard on the turbocharged models. It's not available on the lesser models because that's an 8.8 inch screen, but it doesn't really matter what size the screen. Even though there's wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and this is nice because there's a touch screen, it's not a full touchscreen. And by that, I mean, you can't really do things that you can in other cars. So then I have to go back to the rotary dial and on the move, this is very distracting and hard to use. And then once you go back, well, let me just do this. It's much easier while you're parked. Try doing this while you're driving. You really have to lean over. The only way to get to this, say if you can't touch it, is to go to the Mazda icon. And now this is not touch at all. So then you have to use the rotary dial down here which makes it very distracting. Now they really need to do something about this because I don't know if it's resources or just time, but if they can't do it in house, you gotta outsource this technology to someone that knows how. This was great a few years ago. It's kind of unacceptable now. 
Once you get past the functionality issues, you'll find a lot of features. For example, you can set this heated steering wheel, the driver's seat, and the passenger seat temperature to sync with the auto climate control. There's also a lot of active safety features as standard, and on upper trims, you're getting the 360 degree cameras, which is very nice because this car is very visibility impaired. Plenty of ways to adjust the settings and all the alerts. I like all that. And unlike a lot of cars in this price range, there's a real head-up display that projects the info right on the windshield. It is very clear, and you can have a lot of different settings all at the same time. The 2024 Mazda CX-30 starts at $24,995. Prices are a bit up from 2023. There's eight trims, but the Turbo is the one that starts at $34,990. My Turbo Premium Plus is 38,905 as tested with destination. That's quite a wide price spread, but it does encompass a lot of features that you can't get on some competitors, like the Toyota Corolla Cross and the Honda HRV. There's also the Hyundai Kona, Subaru Crosstrek, and a whole bunch of others. All these years later, the Mazda CX-30 still looks, feels, and drives pretty good. And there's a lot of other cars in the subcompact SUV segment. It's getting very crowded. And the really two items that Mazda really needs to improve on, again, six-speed automatic transmission needs more gears and a complete overhaul on that infotainment software. Mazda cannot keep doing this for the next several model years. But other than that, it really scores high in all of our tests. What do you think? And do you want to see more reviews? Well, we got them. So go to cargirls.com, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.